Hi, it's Crystal from crystallarsimpson.com coming to you with a new blog post for this week. I wanted to share what God put on my heart to write on the blog this week. So the name of this blog post was called, Do You Live a Crucified Life? As we enter the spring season, of course, we are celebrating Jesus and the cross is ever present in our minds. During this time, we praise and celebrate Jesus for giving us a way to the Father. We know that when Jesus came to earth and he died on the cross, that he provided us an opportunity to be reconciled to the Father. But he also gave us instructions on how we are to live our lives after he left. I believe that God wants to remind us that we need to live a crucified life. We have to understand what that means. Living a crucified life means that we obey God, we humble ourselves, and we also die to ourselves. We're going to take a closer look at each of these. So the title of this post is, Do You Live a Crucified Life? Let's start at the beginning. Living a crucified life means that we live a life of obedience. You know, living a crucified life starts with following the commandments. In this day and age, we tend to want to set aside those commandments or write them off as no longer relevant. But the commandments will always be important as they remind us how to live the cross. What I mean by that is that the cross and the commandments are all about love. And as we look at the cross, we need to remember to love God and to love others. In this way, we reach up to God, to heaven, to, and we also reach across to our fellow man. Again, loving God and loving others. Jesus was clear in telling us that we are not to set aside the commandments, nor should we teach others to do so. Instead, we are to practice and teach the commandments. In Matthew 5th chapter, verse 19 in the King James Version, it says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of the, these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So second of all, we need to look at living a crucified life of humility. Jesus explained that if we want to be great, we must be servants. That comes from Matthew 20, 26. Living a crucified life means that you willingly humble yourself before a mighty God in total surrender. There's a verse in 1 Peter 5th chapter, verse 6. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So when we are living in humility, first of all, we are serving God. As Christians, we should be servants. Jesus demonstrated, of course, by example, as he served God and he obediently showed us uh, how to obey the will of the Father. A servant, of course, recognizes who is the boss. And so the Bible teaches that we must come to God as a little child. When we come to God as a child, we humbly surrender to his will for our lives. And if we want to be followers of Christ, we need to follow Christ's example by submitting ourselves to the Father the way he did. As a Christian, we must voluntarily set aside our right and exchange them for a life that loves, serves, and obeys the will of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, we surrender to the will of God for our lives because we really understand that rather than try to make up our own rules, we understand, trust, and believe that the Father loves us and He has our best interest at heart at all times. Out of love for the Father in Christ, as we go about our day, we seek to serve God and bring Him glory in all that we do and say. Secondly, in the same way as humbling ourselves and being servants, we serve others. Jesus willingly washed the feet of his disciples as he taught them that we must be willing to help each other the way he did. The Bible teaches that we should serve one another through love. 
Additionally, the Bible also tells us to take care of the least of these. Well, the least of these are those who are hungry, thirsty, strangers, sick, and as well as those who are in prison and also those who are in need of clothing. That's from Matthew 25th chapter, verse 40 through the 45th verse. I love this scripture. It comes from Galatians 2.20 in the English um, Standard Version. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that brings us to the last and final point. That is about dying to yourself being crucified with Christ, as the verse says. As we spend this season remembering Jesus' crucifixion, we must make his sacrifice personal by considering our own lives. The Bible commands Christians to live a, a crucified life with Christ by dying to ourselves. We must die to ourselves daily and allow Christ to live in and through us. Additionally, we must take up our cross. You know, God has given each one of us talents and responsibilities. We each have a home, children, a job, some circle of influence. And we must be willing to let God and the light of Jesus shine through us so that others can find their way to salvation. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That is the direction from Jesus. In Matthew 16th chapter, verse 24, in the King James Version. So, of course, we know there are three things we need to do, and we need to obey the commandments, we need to be servants, and we also need to die to ourselves. So, of course, at the end of each post, I like to write a prayer, and today's prayer is to help us live that crucified life. As Christians, if we want to honor God, we have to live in obedience and humility as servants. The enemy is going to fight us in this area because he wants us to become prideful and selfish. This week's prayer, again, is to live that crucified life. And that's a prayer that we're going to need to commit to saying and living and praying constantly um, so that we can live the life that God has designed. So will you bow your head and pray with me today? Heavenly Father, I bow my head in worship and prayer today. I thank you for loving me so much that while I was yet a sinner, you made a way to redeem me from the enemy. I accept Jesus as my Savior, and I choose to be a follower of Christ. I willingly lay down my life and exchange it for the one that you have designed. I know that I am called to follow and not lead. You have also called me to serve you and others rather than my selfish desires. Father, sometimes pride rises and the enemy causes me to put myself first. I ask for forgiveness and help in this area. Please help me to live a life of obedience in humble submission to your will and your way. I know that your plan for my life is perfect. I want to bring honor and glory to your name. Help me to live a crucified life. I surrender to your will. Please live in me and through me so that one day I will hear you say, well done, as you call me a good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope that something that I said was a blessing to you. I hope that the prayer that we prayed today was a blessing to you. If you are seeing me on YouTube, of course, you can subscribe uh, to my channel. It's a new channel, so I'd appreciate growing it. And then also, if you're on the website where you see this, you can also scroll down and subscribe to the blog post so that you don't miss a post. If you like this prayer, you can also request getting a printable or a downloadable version of the prayer so that you can pray this one often. 
or share it with a friend. I love you with the love of Jesus. I pray that God keeps you safe and healthy as you celebrate the Resurrection Sunday this week coming up. And I just pray that God blesses you and richly blesses you in Jesus' name.